Today we will be talking about amino acids uh, linking together. Okay, so whenever you have amino acid uh, linkage, okay, you actually form uh, polypeptides. Okay, so you well, let's be a bit more specific. Okay, so uh, so for instance, whenever you link uh, two amino acids together, they make a di. Uh, peptide. Okay. And whenever you link three amino acids together, you guessed it, they make a tri uh, peptide. Man, who said biochemistry was difficult? It's not that difficult. I hope not. So essentially, if you have an amino acid linked with this one, that's a polypeptide. And you know that proteins are made from multiple trillions of polypeptides, okay? And this right here would give us AA and AA and AA right there, okay? Now the bond right here is actually a covalent, covalent bond, okay? Right, so you can say that a peptide bond is a covalent bond, okay? Now, another way you can say this is that amino acids are also called uh, residues. Okay, so they're also called residues. So amino acids, when they're linked together, um, are called residues, right? And actually, this bond, this uh, covalent bond, is actually an amide uh, linkage. Okay, so you're uh, linking the amide with the carboxyl group. Um, with carboxyl group, right? And if you want to talk about direction, usually it's from the five prime, well, yeah, you could say like five prime, or more specifically for this class, not genetics, this is the um, N plus, and this is gonna be the C negative, okay? And you, lead it, uh, you read it from left to right you go from positive to negative, like a battery. Now, of course, we're gonna zoom in completely into the uh, process of linking uh, proteins together, okay? So that's kind of like you're zooming out and you're just looking uh, at the general idea, okay? So this bond that is made is actually formed through a dehydration process. Okay, so it means uh, you remove water. Removes one uh, H2O, okay? So now we're actually gonna uh, work with alanine because it's one of the simplest uh, amino acids and we're gonna link it together, okay? So we're gonna do that. Now we're working with alanine. We're gonna link them together to make a dipeptide, okay? So a dipeptide right here we're going to have some electrons available. Okay, notice that we have the carboxyl group that is already deprotonated. So we're probably at a pH of about 2.2 for alanine, okay? And about two lone pairs, two lone pairs are going to um, essentially combine right there with two hydrogens, two hydrogens. And together, they're going to make H2O which is the dehydration process of the uh, amide linkage, okay? So this is the um, dehydration, okay? And well, you could say that now you have the structure. Right? and it's actually gonna combine with the uh, nitrogen. And you will also have this structure right here. Okay, and now what can happen is that they are going to combine, they're going to combine right there, okay? 
So this is actually the amide linkage as connecting to kind of like the carboxyl. It was, it was a carboxyl, but it's now it's going to be connecting. Okay, so together they're going to make the structure. Okay, together you have H3N plus carbon, and let's kind of hmm, let's let's move this uh, the R group. Okay, so let's just say this right here, right, and then you're going to have your hydrogen. And this is just for like easy to understand, right? And uh, it's aesthetically pleasing. So now you're gonna have this guy. This guy is going to have a carbon that is double bonded to an oxygen. And that right there is a nitrogen with a hydrogen, okay? And then go as normal. Let's just do it like this. Ugh. Where's my red? There it is. Okay. And let's put the hydrogen right here and right there. Okay. So notice that this guy right here is called the peptide bond. Now it is a covalent bond, okay? And it formed via dehydration. And essentially what you did was you combined the uh, alpha carboxyl with the alpha amino. And the reason why we call these residues is because the portion of the amino acids that were left over are called residuals or residues. Okay, so these are residues. Okay. Now notice something very important, and it is that the uh, CH3 or the R group remained unchanged. So R groups uh, remain unchanged. There you go. And also notice, <laughs> there's a lot of things right here. It's a good picture. Now this is a positive, right? So notice that the nitrogen or the amino group is positive. So we have the N is positive. Okay. And that the carboxyl group over here is going to be negative. So C is negative. Right? And so whenever you're linking these um, kind of like amino acids together, you're going to go from left to right, from positive to negative. So that was one linkage, okay? But what if we add another alanine? So if we add another alanine, well, it's going to do the exact same thing. It's going to um, essentially dehydrate and add itself, okay? So then you're going to get another uh, peptide bond. And it's just going to keep repeating and repeating and repeating. Uh, over here is where you're going to have the um, NH3 plus right there, right? And then you're going to have the carboxyl group towards the right. So if you just keep repeating alanines and alanines, eventually you're going to have N positive, C negative, N positive, C negative, N positive, C negative, right? With the polypeptides uh, in between, the, the polypeptide bond. Okay, so hopefully that kind of explains um, the formation of polypeptide bonds to you. But now let's let's uh, let's focus on the polypeptide bond. Okay, so let's zoom in even more into this location. Okay, so let's ignore everything. Um, let's just call this carbon with an oxygen, uh, nitrogen, and some hydrogens, and they're connected to. Let's just say these are uh, R groups, okay? Where R groups is like everything towards the left or towards the right, okay? So let's just focus on this one. Well, if you were intuitive, if you caught on, you can have a resonance structure. So normally you have this right here, right? That's kind of like the most stable. 
but resonance is kind of like the hybrid or the in-betweens of all the possible uh, bond formations, okay? So you can have a bond right here, or you could have a bond right there, okay? So either way, you can have it like this, or you can have it like that. It's always gonna be, um, it's, well, this is like the main uh, structure right there, so a double bond towards the O. Um, typically, you want the most electronegative uh, element to have the most bonds, but in real life, it's kind of like a mixture between the hybrids. So because you have the potential to make two double bonds, this is gonna be resonance uh, stabilized, okay? So this is resonance stabilized. And you know, if you kind of look for a split second, um, you have where there are two double bonds directly connected to this carbon. And that's kind of weird because carbon would have five bonds, it's weird. But because of that, you actually have uh, no rotation. Okay? Because you have a lot of double bonds and they can't rotate. So what that means for us is that uh, this one does not protonate, okay? So you're not gonna lose the hydrogen from the nitrogen, okay? So it does not, does not uh, protonate, okay? And it's also planar. So what does that mean? Well, it means that if you were to get a model and make this um, st structure, you can actually lay it flat on a table or a piece of paper. It's gonna be within the plane of the paper, right? Nothing is gonna jump at you. Nothing is gonna go into the paper. Nothing's gonna go towards the ceiling. Everything is very flat, very, uh, um, I guess, uh, horizontal, okay? So this is planar, it's planar. And the uh, strength of the structure is very strong because uh, of the double bonds. So double bonds, right, are very strong. And so throughout the uh, polypeptide chain, so let's, let's imagine that you have um, a billion, trillion, quadrillion, zillion uh, uh, alanines combined, okay? So you have this whole structure just repeating for infinity, okay? Well, you're gonna have a backbone for uh, these peptide bonds for these little green structures, okay? Because that peptide bond is kind of like the spine of the chain, okay? Without those um, strong, rigid, planar connections, everything would fall apart. So imagine that you have uh, a house and that you're plumbing, and you want the plumbing to be strong and um, uh, reliable, okay? Well, you're going to have these little couplings which link together the pipes. So if you don't have those linkings or the linkers, then the pipes are just gonna fall out of place and water flows out everywhere and you're gonna have a huge water bill. It's pretty bad. Um, so you can imagine the polypeptide uh, bond to be kind of like the linkers for the amino acid chain, okay, for the polypeptide chain. So because they're rigid, strong, and they don't rotate, they're gonna be very good for connecting things, okay? Now, because this cannot rotate, what can rotate? Well, what can rotate are these carbons right here. They don't have any double bonds. So that carbon and that carbon can actually rotate. But even though they can rotate, they're gonna be um, hindered, okay? So they can't rotate all willy-nilly. They're actually limited by sterics, okay? So I'm not gonna rotate into a, uh, a position where I'm gonna have more energy. That's bad. You want to rotate in a position where there's uh, the least amount of steric hindrance, right? So that's pretty cool. Uh, just remember that these uh, carbons can rotate, but they're gonna rotate in the area where they have the least amount of, of energy to waste. And exactly how do they rotate? Well, you wanna focus on the R groups, okay? So the R groups is ultimately what you're gonna, um, you know, rely on whenever you're rotating. You don't want the R group to be next to uh, electronegative substance, okay? So this right here is pretty good um, because it's not next to the oxygen right there. It would be pretty bad if you had the methyl group next to the oxygen. And so by that logic, let's actually um, change this, okay? Let's change this 
because this is incorrect of how I drew it, right? Why? Can anybody tell me why? I probably can't hear you. At least I would hope not. Um, so this right here is hydrogen, and then we're going to have the CH3. Why? Well, this is going to be a trans um, structure, okay? So this is trans. And trans is always good So uh, whenever you're making uh, polypeptides. So for polypeptides, uh, trans is preferred. because they don't have any steric hindrance, right? So you're not reacting with, uh, so these two methyl groups, the R groups, are not touching each other. They're not close to each other. They're on opposite ends. So always make sure, uh, make sure that R groups are staggered or in different uh, locations, so opposite ends. So this lo uh, lowers the energy needed to create the polypeptide bond. Your body wants to waste the least amount of energy to get things done, okay? So that's pretty cool. Cis is almost never used. The exception for cis um, yeah, amino acids would have to be proline, okay? It has to be proline. So exception, exception, is with uh, proline, okay? Because proline is very like rigid, it doesn't have a lot of uh, movement around it, and you just can't really do anything about the rotation, okay? So the exception whenever you make amino acids is with proline. Nobody likes proline. So still with proline, you want to have a trans uh, formation, okay? But roughly 10% of the amino acids are going to have a cis conformation with proline. For the other amino acids, it's like 99% uh, trans formation. For proline, it's like 10% cis formation with 90% chance of uh, trans formation, okay? So, yeah. Well, let's just write that down. So 10% is uh, cis. And that is it for uh, polypeptides and their linkage. Okay, so hopefully now you know how to um, do the reaction to link polypeptides together. And yeah, so hopefully you have a great day and thank you for spending time with me. And remember that I love you. All right, goodbye.